Hey, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. I'm very pleased to have John Tonkin from Brain in a Box and uh, very excited because Nicole Lynch is going to lead this session um, because uh, this is something that she's been talking about frequently and I know that you've dealt with uh, John quite a lot and uh, you are a goddess when it comes to sorting out processes. (laughs) John paid me to say that. (laughs) But... uh, (laughs) But, uh, you know, it's very much something in our professional services businesses. We need processes in place. People, processes, technology um, are very critical to elements of uh, running, growing and and creating a profitable uh, professional services business. So I'd like to initially hand over to Nicole to um, say anything that she'd like to say and um, and lead the way and I'm here in the background if anyone needs me. Uh, Well thank you Heather. Um, I guess I've known John for five or six years now Um, and we've been working together trying to improve our business um, because we want to hire people and we want everyone to be doing things properly Um, and also as a two partner firm um, we don't always see eye to eye on the best way to do things so we have had John come in and break up some fights maybe um as we decide how how we're going to roll um and i've been we've been doing lots of updates recently with JobKeeper and all of that excitement and um i've talked about it and people have shown some interest so john's here to i guess talk to everyone about why systems are a great idea how maybe they might want to do them Um, and i think we've got some an example or two to show as well Um, so John, take it away. Here we go then. I'm going to, with your permission, share my screen and that screen, just so I get it right. And are you able to see that? Yes. That's a wonderful thing then. Okay, so the roadmap to great systems uh, is the title of this and it'll very quickly change as you will see. So Brain in a Box came from exactly what Nicole was talking about. We've got all our systems in our head and what we need to do is to get it to into a box so we can say, hey, here's your job. Here's what you do. Here's what you do so that we can employ people. And that's a critical thing. Systems that stay in the box aren't going to help anybody. So let's just jump along a little bit and see what else we've got here. So the first thing that we're going to look at is why systems? So people ask me that, you know, why systems as if it's an option. And to me, what they're doing very, very simply is to ask the wrong question. So the question cannot be why systems, because, you know, why systems is like, say, why breed? No, we just do it. We can do it better. We can do it more effectively. Why eat? We can do it better. We can do it more effectively. Why exercise? All those things. But we do them to some extent already. So really, you know, we already have the systems. What we're trying to do is to make sure that we can uh, get the best out of our systems. So the question isn't why systems, we want to actually ask a better question. So the real question for me is something along the lines of, why am I prepared to put up with four systems? So if we have the systems we have and they don't do what we want, well, why why would we do that? Um, Why do I keep responding to the same problems? Why do my team members keep asking the same questions? Why don't they do it the right way? I've turned them the right way and still they do it the wrong way, et cetera. And why am I the only one who knows what to do? So very, very simply summing all that up, why don't we have decent systems? So that's the the point for me. Why don't we all have decent systems? So systems are the backbone, the core of your business. Your business isn't up here. Your business is what people do every day of the week. And what people do, of course, is purely systems. So what we want to do is to make sure we have a way of getting systems into suddenly into place and then make sure that people follow them. So how did things get the way they are? Why do we have systems that may be really good, really bad, or somewhere in, in between, pardon me? Because, you know, it doesn't really matter. What does matter is that we start thinking about what we can do now. I love the words uh, Arthur Ashe used many years ago. So start where you are, use what you have, do what you can. So start where you are, use what you have, do what you can. We don't have to wait until everything's perfect before we get going. We can systemize one little process today 
and be ahead of where we were yesterday. So we're going to look at a few things here. So what would my business look like? Uh, who has the know-how to help me do this, to work with me on this? How will it actually help me or the business if I have systems in place? Uh, how can I actually do it? You know, it's going to take time. It'll take effort. I'm going to have to use the, the resources of my team. How will we are able to be? How will we be able to do that? And then, lastly, of course, how long is it going to take? How can I make it work? How will I plan for this? So, I thought rather than go through and give you lots and lots of input into the sorts of things you could do there, I thought we'd do a little exercise and find out what is likely to happen with you. So, I hope you have a pen and paper ready because you're going to need it right now. So we're going to look at a little basic principle that says, if we have a vision for what we want to achieve, if we have the skills to achieve it, if we have the incentive, the resources, and we have an action plan, we will get to success. I hope that's a fair enough thing. What do you reckon? Thumbs up. If we had all those things, would we get to success? I believe so. Unfortunately, we may be missing something there. So if we have all the other things, but we don't have a vision, we're not clear what it'll look like. You know, oh, I know I need to, I know how to, I've got the resources, I've got an action plan, but I just can't see how my business is going to be. You know, vision, see, you've got to be able to see it working that way. We're going to end up with confusion. If we had everything else in place and we didn't have the skills to do it, so we can see, oh, I can see my business is running like a well-oiled machine. I know it's going to help me bring in more business, et cetera. I've got the resources. I've got an action plan. I just don't have the skills. You're going to be anxious all the time because you want to do it, but you know you can't. Likewise, if you aren't clear on the incentive, typically this is people who say, oh, yeah, my business coach told me I better do systems or someone was saying I've got to have systems. They're not really enrolled in them themselves. And so they're going to end up with delays. And if we have no resources, so I don't have the time, I don't have the effort I can spend, I don't have a team to help me as well as I'd like, and we've got everything else in place, we're going to be pretty frustrated because I think, look, I know what I can do, I know it'll work, I've got all the skills, I've got all this, but I just don't have the time, I don't have the money, I don't have the team, I, don't, I can't apply the effort. You'll be very frustrated. And then lastly, we're looking at all of those things in place, but I haven't got a plan. So I sort of think, oh, yeah, no, it's easy. I know what it's going to look like. Imagine building a house like this. You know, we've got everything except the floor plan. You're going to have a whole pile of false starts. Yeah, I think we'll start with a garage, Mabel, and so on. And we move along and then we realize, hmm, maybe that wasn't best. Maybe we should start with the laundry and so on. You keep going through each room until. So what we want to do is to make sure that we have all of those things lined up. This is where your pen and paper come into play. So maybe if you just write down either each of those words or just put V-S-I-R-A, <clears throat> and give yourself a score out of 10. So how would you say you are out of 10 with your vision for success in systems in this case, but it could be the same for anything at all. So I'm going to just sort of go through and put some numbers in just to illustrate it. So we're saying, yeah, I reckon I'm about four for vision, six for skills, two for incentive. I'm not quite clear why I'm doing it yet. Pretty strong on resources and I've got a, yeah, a bit of a plan, but it's not much. And so on. So just put down your score, what you believe you are there for vision, skills, incentive, resources, and action plan. Now you haven't got this sheet, so you're just going to sort of imagine, uh, maybe divide the page in two across and sort of work out roughly where those numbers would be. But what we're doing here, and you can see the effect of it anyway. So for vision, we scored a two. So I'm going to slap my uh, four, sorry. So there's my four there, there's my six for skills, there's my two for incentive, my seven for resources, and my three for action plan. And you'll see down the bottom, I've got the results if you don't achieve these things, if you haven't got them in place. So here, what we're doing is to say, all right, unless you take care, if you had a four for vision and so on and so on, you're going to end up with something like this. So you're going to end up with a fair amount of confusion, lots of delays and some false starts. So it's just giving you an idea that this is what you are right now likely to end up with. Now, I'd like to put the good side on that because we like good sides, the better view of it. If I'm not good at spelling, what do I do? Anyone you can play, test your buzzers, folks. <laughs> if I'm not good at spelling, what do I do? Use a different word. Use a different word, there you go. Yeah, big, large. I've got choices there. 
Okay, if I'm not good at spelling, I can use a spell check. If I'm not good at my words, I can use a thesaurus and so on. I can do all these different things to cover the issues I have. So we're looking for, if I know I'm not good at uh, managing uh, plans and so on, I would get somebody to help me with that. It's a bit like playing the piano. We can all learn to play the piano by ourselves, but we're going to do a lot better with a teacher. So what I want to do is to look at a roadmap to get from where we are now, where I think, you know what, I think I need to have systems in place, but I want to make sure that I've got a plan to get there. Now, I'm showing one way to get there, but before we do, let's just have a little chat. Uh, you're welcome to take your mics off and just consider what do people typically do when they say, you know what, we've got to systemize the business. What are some of the things that people do? Anyone can play. You can put in the check. Yep, autocorrect, we got that one there. Uh, the, the screens, everything will be up. So just answering, answering your question there, Melinda, uh, Melinda, Melinda, sorry. Everything is going up in the uh, live stream. So you've got that. Okay, we can brainstorm and that gives us a good starting point for systems. What else can we do? Um, you uh, can possibly like, buy one. Someone's pre You can buy something. So you can buy something that somebody's already produced. I can say, oh, well, this looks good. I think it's pretty close. I'll use that. You can do that. You can get a coach. Thanks, Tim. So you can get a coach and the coach will help you to develop your systems. Any other thoughts? One more, just one more and then we'll head off. Okay, and you can Google it. Yep, so you can Google things. And all of those things are good. What they are though, every one of them, except for the brainstorming one, is someone else telling you or helping you with it, which is good, but it can also be uh, it can also promote a sort of, a, and I, I don't want to say laziness, but a, a reliance on something externally. So what we want to do is to make sure that we develop systems that work for us. So there we go, we've got a massive Googler amongst us and give it a go and just try it. I don't mind that either. So it's a good way to get going. So good is better than best. Anything is better than nothing and something that's better than something is even better than that. That doesn't make sense. Okay, so let's go in here and have a look at the roadmap. What we're going to do is to go through the process that we typically follow. We work with a different client, systemizing their business every day of the week. So we don't really stop. We go into a business on Monday, we come out on Friday, all their core systems are mapped and they're ready to go. And I'm showing you how we do that. So this is the road from system zero to systems hero. And it starts off by looking at a mind map. So the mind map is a broad picture of the business. So we can look at it and we can say, you know what? I know what the business is now. It's all those bits on the page there. Then we're going to go from there to mapping it. Typically we map it with post-it notes. Um, obviously these days we're not visiting the client and working with post-it notes in their office quite so often uh, because of COVID, but we do it via Zoom and we get the same output. Okay, then we've got Map It with Lucid Chart. So we love Lucid Chart. It's an app for doing flow charting, but there are plenty of other flow charting apps around there. And then we're going to publish it into our Google site. That's what we typically do, but we're working with a client at the moment who's working in SharePoint. Last week worked in SharePoint as well. Uh, there's Confluence. There are many different ways of publishing what you uh, produce. So there, here's one example. And of course, at the end of that, we have a systemized business. Okay, so what I'm going to do, and I haven't got it linked up there yet, but I'll put that up uh, later, and you'll have a link to this document, Kick Off Your Systems Using FreeMind. So if I give you that, Nicole, later, I will give it to you, and you can slap a link up there mm -hmm. by Heather Howarder. Okay, so we use FreeMind. It's an old app. I'll be very clear on that. We've been using it since 2000, uh, something around that. It's old, but it's perfectly good. It does everything that all the modern ones do. Uh, and it's available on Mac and Windows and even Linux. It's free, it's easy to use. It has tons of features, uh, features that you pay everything, every step up in other, other software. So it's worthwhile using as a tool if you haven't used one before. And the other good thing is that you can import and export from FreeMind, you can export a FreeMind mind map into practically every other tool. It's a de facto standard worldwide. So it's a good place to start. So typically what we're going to do is to sort of go there, search for FreeMind download, come to this page, download it, and there you are. And before you know it, 
you've got your little mind map up and running and going in there. So here's our coffee company. And we're starting off just by looking at the coffee company in terms of four areas, marketing, sales, delivery, and admin. And if you think about marketing, sales, delivery, and admin, it covers every business from BHP at the top down to the Ma and Pa sandwich shop down the corner there. So every business has to go out and say to the world, here's what we do. Here's how we do it. Are you interested? That's marketing. And of course, the outcome of marketing is a lead. They get the lead, they throw it across the fence into sales. And then the sales team goes out and starts developing the, uh, the interest that those people have. And then hopefully we get a sales order or a purchase order. And then it comes into delivery where we deliver our product or service, in this case, coffee. Uh, and then we've got admin. And of course, the most important part of admin is the accounts function. So we've got everything in there, but we've also got legals and we've got HR and we've got IT and we may have a few other areas down there as well. But essentially that can cover every business we work with. So let's look at that business and we come along and once we spend a little bit of time there, we've worked out, hey, these are the core things we do. It's only a small business. This was a real business or is a real business. I just took away their name for a moment. And if you look at it, you can see they go right through marketing, how they manage a demo. They go out and let people smell the coffee, I suppose, and uh, manage a promotion and do these different things. In their sales, they manage a referral, they manage a re an inquiry, and they take an order and they uh, approach a new prospect in there too, apparently, and sort of make the first contact. And then in delivery, we've got managed leases, rental, free on loan. That's the equipment they have. They set up a payment plan, they do these things. So these are the systems that they need to have covered in their coffee distribution business. So everything comes down to saying, hey, what does the business actually look like? What does it do? So compare this, for instance, to what most people do. And they just say, oh, well, what are the areas of the business? Oh, well, we've got marketing, we've got sales and then operations or some vague term, and they're not quite sure what goes in there. So by creating the mind map, what you're doing is to say, this is my business. This is what it looks like. And so that's the best place to start. And notice that we're looking at function. We're talking about what the business does. So we do have to manage a referral. We have to manage an inquiry. We have to take an order. So every process we have is based on what we do. It's not talking about bookkeeping or bookkeeping bronze lead or some other um, version of it. We're just saying these are the actual processes that we need to follow. John, so, a question about um, this particular app. Does it add the icons itself and does it have a spell check function? It does have a spell check function and the icons are all these little things over the side here. So if you look down the side, but you can also just press Alt I, Alt I for icon and bring them up and select icons so you can do that. Now notice that I've got a little key over the side here. We've got all these little icons. So if I'm looking at this one, I'm looking at might need to people. zoom a bit. We're all squinting. Oh, look at that. Oh perfect. This is technology wonderful. So see these little this little group of people here, people here, people here, people here. And I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, what does that mean? Because next Monday I might be looking at it and say, hey John, what was it? Or someone else is saying it to me, John, what was it where you put these little people there? And so to make sure that we don't confuse ourselves, what we've done is to create a key. And what we're saying here is that when you see the little group of people, we know that that means this is the process which is client facing. If we look at this one, for instance, in-store marketing, oh, I didn't think of that. As we're going through the mind map, the fellow uh, we were working with said, you know what, we should actually put some in-store marketing so they know it's our coffee. So that was a good idea. And so we know that because we've got the good idea icon there. These ones are problems. I don't know whether we had any problems here. Oh, no, it's a business without problems. Isn't that good? And likewise, we could go through and work out what works well, where there are minor issues, where we've got inconsistency and so on. Use it how you like. The wonderful thing about a mind map is that you can start anywhere and end anywhere. So most people think of, oh, I need to work something out. And there are multiple things, so I'm going to put them in a list. And they go through the list, one, two, three, four. What's the fifth thing? And they sit there for hours trying to work it out. So what we'd be doing is to acknowledge that the brain doesn't work like that. The brain's actually going one, two, three, fish, or something else. So the brain doesn't go in a straight line. 
So really a mind map lets us go, here we're doing something in sales and then someone says, oh, I just remembered we've got to have that bit about manager promotions so we can pop up here and put it into marketing. And then we can either come back down here into sales or we can say, hey, let's stay up here at the moment because our brain works like that. Our brain goes from one to the other to the other. You know, very simply, if I were to ask the question now and get an honest answer, I can guarantee that not everyone has been totally focused on systems since we started. Okay, so something else has come into your head. One thing reminds us of another and so on. And this is very good. This is what we've done with our mind map. And you can see the numbers here and we've said what they mean. So these are Peter, Paul and Mary, the three people who work in our business. And we've said, right, so uh, Peter, you're looking at the two uh, marketing processes up here, three marketing processes, and you're looking at manager referral on this one and this one and this one. And Paul, you're doing all the ones with a two on it and so on. So without going right through it, we can filter. So we can see, just show me all the ones that Paul's working on. Show me all the ones that Mary's working on and so on. But it's a great way to get a picture of the business and say, you know what, that's what my business does. Everywhere you see that little circle at the end there, that says there's a bit more involved in this process. So we can expand it even further and we can go out and show the next level. So you can put a huge amount of detail in here. You can confuse everyone silly if you wanted to. But we started out with these four points, marketing, sales, delivery, and admin. Doesn't mean we have to work up there, uh, end up there. We can end up with marketing, sales, small client, big client, and any way you like to look at it. But effectively, we've broken it down so we can say, I know where our business is right now. <laughs> Please excuse me. So when we have got our mind map there, then we've got this great big list of processes and we say, you know what, we need a process to manage a referral. We need one to, to manage an inquiry. We need one to take an order and so on. We need to be able to capture everything we do. And what we want to do from that is to start mapping that. And when we map, typically we're using our little post-it notes. So we uh, here's, here's one for a document. So it's got a curly bottom there for a document and here's one for a, a process step and so on. And of course, these are all our own ones. So um, that makes it easy, but you don't have to have them. You can just go to Officeworks and buy some post-it notes and use them as well. So what we're going to do is to look at how we map a process. Now, just to give you a little bit of education on this, if I said, uh, hey, could you go and make me a cup of coffee, please? Um, um, oh, one white with one. And when it comes back, how likely are you to say, hmm, yep, thank you very much. That coffee's fine. Pretty much okay. Yep. You're not going to sort of be saying, well, oh, it's actually got, I think, about a third of a gram too much sugar or a little bit more or less milk than I would like and so on. We're typically going to say white with one and it comes back and we say, thank you. And we drink it. So what's the level of compliance we're looking at there? Pretty low, it doesn't really matter as long as we get the outcome. Sadly, when we're doing systems around our bookkeeping or accounting, we wanna make sure that we have a higher level of compliance. So we wanna make sure everyone understands what we're doing. And we wanna make sure also that people know how to use the little figures we're using. So what we start out with is a little exercise and I'd almost love to do it now, but we start off with a little coffee exercise. So we get people, to map how they make that cup of coffee. And if you just look around at these, we're not going to ask you to do it, but if you look at what you're seeing there on the screen, you can see that every one of them looks different. Look at the detail this person's going into. This one, do this and ask a question, then based on these four answers, do that. Here's this one coming down and lots of decisions down there and so on. Here's this guy who heads up a big uh, shop fitting business over in Perth. And he's got, uh, this is quite some white years ago. But there he is, he's got a pretty basic process straight down, there it is, there's your coffee. So even just with something as basic as, could you make me a coffee please, white with one, we've got all that variation and that's what we're trying to take away with our systems. So when we're looking at it, we're also understanding that people think differently, people are going to end up with a different result. So when we map it, we're going to be looking for that variation there. So when we do this, who should be mapping, who should be working on our process, on our systems? Who do you reckon it should be? Just you? Because you know team. everything. Hopefully the whole team. The whole team? Who thinks the whole team? Raise a hand. 
who thinks, yeah, you know what, just um, just look me and me and so and so because they're the we're the experts at this. Okay, I'd ask the question, who do you want to follow the systems? And then from that question, I'd say, when we look at systems, who's likely to follow those systems more closely? The person who owns them or the person who's been told to follow them or asked to follow them? So if it's the person who owns them, we want people to own it. So that's where we look at this little triangle. It's called the triangle of accountability because it's a triangle. And it's about accountability. <clears throat> so what we're doing here is we want people to be involved because that involvement will lead to a sense of ownership. And that ownership is going to be the place they get their accountability from. So no one is ever going to hold themselves accountable for something they don't own. So if we can get them involved in helping us work on those systems, uh, then we can go through and say, great, everyone will own that. And they are more likely to follow the process then. So we map the process and as you can imagine, it's a very dry process. We're just sort of, you know, mapping it and going through and putting little stickies up on there. And it's, you know, pretty dry and boring and we get through the week somehow. Um, and, you know, we try and survive the week. So this was a real one. This was a few years ago, 2000 and I think 14, well, it might be 16, but anyway, a while ago. And here we are, this is a dental practice over in Perth. And this was all the processes or the, the core processes that you're seeing there that they followed. So we've mapped all those processes and we're ready to go with them. If we looked at a couple of others, we've got a bit more, um, a bit more excitement there. So this is us going through and decorating buildings and so on. So the top was a builder down in uh, Geelong and the mid second one there is a, a wealth management company here in Sydney, um, since out of business. Um, for various reasons, not because they were bad, just because the world changed for investment via self-managed super funds. But you get the idea. So things change uh, and so on. But nevertheless, they're pretty impressive photos. And I like this little red poster over here and it sums up everything. So keep calm and follow the system, which is what we want everybody to do. Okay, so any questions, any observations, anything at this stage? Just while I have a sip of gin. How oh, come I didn't get to feature there? We did lots. Where's yeah, my... we did lots. We did lots. We just didn't have them all on the wall at one time. <clears throat> okay, so here we go. We've got a blank screen in front of us. This is the process. So this is the core of what we do because we don't just sit down and say, hey, let's map it and we get there and go through and map it. Because if we do that, what's likely to end up? What, what could be the outcome? Peter, Paul and Ma Mary were in uh, uh, the searchers, the seekers, the seekers, that was it, seekers. Okay, the guy at the front was rocking a blueberry, a blackberry, whatever, yes, exactly. Uh, the, the mind map tool doesn't add those. Yep, exactly. Sorry, I should have been focusing more on these as well. Okay, so um, what do we, what's going to happen if we just get people and say, hey guys, can you go away and map this process? Which is what I hear people do. They say, or they go and say, look, Marianne, go and write down exactly how we do this, will you please? And we'll use that as our system. What's likely to happen if we just say, could you go away and write down what you do? What happens? Well, from our experience, we missed a whole bunch of steps. We went straight from step one to straight to step seven, and we'd missed it a whole bunch of, in the middle because it was, in we here. were so used to it that we didn't That's think right. it was a step anymore. We do it just automatically, and we don't think of it as a conscious step we have to follow. Therefore, we won't tell somebody else to do it. Then they're going to be saying, but I can't follow this. Oh, you're silly. I don't know why you can't follow it. I do it every day. The other thing is that when we give somebody with a task, we say, Hey, Marianne, could you go and write, uh, I want you to write up all the steps for uh, doing a bank wreck, something like that. So Marianne goes away and spends a day and a half on it or some time, some significant amount of time on it. And she comes back and she's proud as punch and she says, here it is. This is perfect. I've gone through it and I don't see how you could fault it. I think it's all perfect, all there. <clears throat> and you look at it, you think, wow, you've got to be kidding because it turns out Marianne is a very high auditory learner and auditory learners write lots of words because they're hearing it said to them as they go. 
So she's got tons and tons of words written down around how to do this. And sadly, no one else in the business works that way. So they're not really going to read it. I remember going into a smash repair business many years ago and the owner of the business said, uh, I'm just looking at what you do. We showed him something maybe similar to this. And we said, oh, I'm looking at what you do and all I'm seeing is pretty pictures. We've got it all written down here properly. And he pulled out a full scap folder. I mean, full scap, not A4. He pulled out a full scap folder and inside was a typewritten page, uh, single typed, single spaced, and all the instructions for the guys in his smash repair business, we could see through the window, apparently followed this written procedure. And I'd be pretty sure that if you asked anyone downstairs, there's, oh yeah, we've had a look at it, but we could never follow it. So systems have to be written for the people to use, not for us to be able to say, good, we've got them and have that false sense of security there. We don't want to end up with reluctant compliance, which is what the guys in the smash repair business, I'm sure they all raised their hands and said, yes, Otto, we will follow your process. And yet I'm pretty sure also none of them actually followed it. So we've got to make sure we've got the whole thing written out there in a form that they can follow, that they can own that ownership coming back there. So let's look at the process we use. This is our methodology. This is our five steps method uh, methodology for uh, preparing for creating systems. So everything in systems comes down to, <clears throat> me clearing my throat. Everything in systems comes down to uh, a process. So a process might be saying, I imagine if I were doing invoicing a little bit old fashioned, I've got my pile of paper invoices. There they are on the left of my computer. And I open up zero QuickBooks, my whatever, and I put the first one in and put it all in. Then I move it across to this side. And eventually I get them all across to that side. And then I go and scan them up into the system. And I say, oh, good. I've done the invoicing. I've entered all the, the uh, payable invoices or whatever it was. So in effect, I started. I had my process start. I had it all ready, got all my invoices ready to go, put them all in. And then I finalized it by scanning and saving them. So that's the process. It's one process from start to finish. What we're going to do then is to say, hey, what do we have to have at the end of this process? Then we're going to record the process. We're going to check it to make sure that what we mapped doesn't just look nice, it actually meets all, pardon me, all the needs. And then what we're doing after that is to launch the process. In other words, get it out with the team, train it and do that. Um, just a quick question, who is likely to wait until they've got all their systems, everything's there, you know, da, 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 they're all there and then launch it with the team. Who thinks that's the best one to do, best idea? Anyone game? Would you rather launch everything at once or do them as you go? Remember, we're trying to involve the team here. Do okay. them as you go, otherwise you'll get overwhelmed. Exactly. So do them as you go is the best way. And I say this, I've been doing this for around about 30 years. These are all these gray hairs are real, they're not sprayed on. Um, so very, very simply, when you do it as you go, people who worked with you working on this process yesterday, that's right, thank you, launching and refining all the time, that's the way. So the people who worked with it yesterday come in and they see, oh, John, that's fantastic, or Fred or Mary Ann, that's fantastic, here it is. And then when they see that published, they feel proud of it because they did that. One of the things that has become very apparent to me as I'm growing older and bigger and everything else is that we are the same people we were in the playground back in primary school. The same things that motivated us then motivate us now. We've just become a little bit more careful at uh, masking things we don't want to show. Uh, we've learned how to deal with things differently and we talk in different language. So really the same thing. So we are proud of what we do. We want to share it, we want to use it. And everyone loves to see what they did yesterday. Oh, wow, I did that step. That was me. And so on, so that they can then feel proud of putting into action. And then you'll hear people, you'll hear them across the wall there, across the table or divider or something say, oh, so what you need to do now is just do this and this and this. And they take ownership for the process they've worked on. So very simply, let's go through here. So defining the process, we need to have a start and a finish. So we need to say where this is the process for, um, we need to be clearly defined. I'm going to step away from bookkeeping accounting for a moment and think of camping. Could you just, uh, jump into the, into the chat there and just put the first thing that comes to mind if we're thinking about going camping? What's the first thing that pops to mind? 
Glamping. Oh, you're not allowed to do that. Come on, Heather. Tent. Okay. Second person, Flavia, tent. Michelle, tent. Who else? What else other things are you thinking about? Caravan. Okay. I'll sort of have to go there. Okay. We're thinking of all our tea. Yep. Food. Okay. And if we think about all those things, and then I might be that guy who's going to go, oh, I'm just going to go and check the tent and make sure that the ropes and the pegs are all there and all of that sort of thing. So you're up here, someone's up here saying, hey, where are we even going to go? And I want to make sure that the caravan it has, isn't even registered now and so on. We're looking at bedding, food, location, all those things. All of these things, if we think about the very first idea when we're thinking about camping, coming down to when we come home, all of that makes up camping. Let me get it on the screen there. But we've got to make sure we're talking about the right bit. So I might say, hey, let's look at the camping bit, decide to go and so on, all those. Let's look at camping from the time we arrive at the site to the time we say everything's set up. Because otherwise someone else is thinking from here to here, someone else is thinking all of that, someone else is thinking just there, right at the top, someone else's, etc. We've got to make sure we're talking about the right part of camping, the right thing. And then as Heather said, a checklist would be fantastic there. So that is, uh, we'll come to checklists and things in a short while too, so critical. The very first thing we have to do with every process we have is to do the preparation. Then we're going to do look at what we have to do for the tidying up. So if we think about my invoice example, I've got to make sure I've got all those invoices here ready to go. I'm not going to get halfway through and realize, oh, I've got to go and the in, get the invoices from over there or something like that. I realize it's a very old example, but we've got to do all that preparation first. At the end, we've got to think of our tidying up and then we have to go through now and look at the doing it bit. So what are we actually doing in here? Entering it into zero or MIB or QuickBooks or wherever. So that's us doing the do part. If you think about this in a different setting, let's think about having a dinner party. So we're thinking, okay, wow, I think I'm gonna invite um, Nicole and Monica to dinner next Saturday. So here we're thinking that's the start of it. All the preparation is going to be the, the purchasing food, uh, tidying up the house a little bit, setting the table, cooling the wine or bring whatever we're doing with that, uh, getting everything cooked, ready to go. And then we have the part of the dinner, dinner setting itself. So the service, if you like. And then at the end of that, we're thinking, oh, well, that was lovely. We can't just push the plates away and say, that was lovely, Mabel. What we have to do now, of course, is to tidy it all up, wash the dishes, wash those pots and pans, scrub everything down, clean it up and then we're ready for breakfast on Sunday or whenever it is. So if we think about that in terms of a house, a dinner party, yep, we've got that same little bit there, the prepare for it, do it and tidy up. Let's extend that idea and think in terms of a restaurant. So we've got all the preparation, the mise en place. We've got that at the very beginning here. Then once we're ready with that, then we've got service. So we've got cooking food, serving food, clearing plates, setting plates and doing all of that. And at the end, we've got all those pots and pans to wash. And it has to work perfectly because at the end of the night, when we finish straight away next morning, zoom, next shift is going to come in and they have to be able to do the same thing over again, next shift again and again and again. So is that sounding like a system? Because that's what we're talking about. Then we're saying, all right, if we've worked out what the system has to cover, then we have to focus on the output. We have to make sure we're clear on what we had at the beginning and we better be really good at the process that gets us from here, input to here, output. <clears throat> when we do that, we're thinking of the roles. So what roles are involved in doing this? Who does which bit? Oh, that bit's done by the senior bookkeeper only because we need it, whatever it may be there and so on. Oh, this bit has to be done by the BAS agent because no one else has the right or the license or the permit to do that and so on. So we've got to be clear on our roles We've got to be very clear on the risks. So risk is very simply, we're thinking of all the things that could go wrong or have gone wrong in the past. Okay, what could go wrong or have gone wrong in the past. So if we think about camping, forgot to take the matches that time, we'd be making sure that we manage that risk very effectively by that checklist that was Heather, Heather was talking about, even just by making sure I'm gonna put the matches in the glove box straight away so I don't forget them. So we'll have some strategy to manage the risks, okay? Because if we don't manage the risks, they're still in the process, which can look as pretty as ever, but all the, pro all the risks are still there. And then lastly, we're looking at the benefits. 
if we follow this process perfectly, how is it going to help me, the team, the business? So there's no point in having a process that just we go through and follow the process. So the benefit is really coming along and saying, you know what, if we do this carefully, we'll get better retention. Our clients will stay with us longer. If we do this perfectly, we may get more referrals. If we do this properly, perfectly, we will be compliant. That's not a bad thing. Okay, if we do this perfectly, we have an audit trail. Yes, we did that on the 23rd. We sent it to you on the 25th and so on. Our system should cover all of those things. And then of course, once we've got that, we can say, that's fantastic. Let's map the thing now. Whew, we're finally getting to map it. So when we're mapping at the same time we're doing that, we're going through and saying, hey, would it be better that we had a checklist showing how to do this? There's our camping checklist. Um, if we are doing this, would it be good to have a video showing how to uh, upload this into the ATO portal or something like that? Would it be good if we had this to show how to navigate through JobKeeper or something along those lines? So we're thinking about all the props. We call these the props. So the checklist, the forms, the videos, the guides, posters, workflows, anything you can think of that makes it easy for somebody to do the right thing. Okay, so we're going to check the process next. Oh, sorry, as we're mapping it, we're recording it. Map the workflow. We're going to record all the props. So the props are those checklists, forms, templates, and so on. And then we're going to assign the roles. So it has to be such that everyone knows very, very clearly, I do this, then you do that. In systems, when you hear the word everyone, we know that the word everyone actually means no one. So when we say, oh, everyone has to do that, we know that no one will do it. Look at the kitchen in most businesses. You know, you walk in and there's the kitchen, the kitchenette or whatever. And there's a little sign and usually a little bit humorous and it says, everyone has to clean up for themselves. And of course, the fact that no one's cleaned up tells you that everyone actually means no one. Okay, so once we've mapped the workflow, we've recorded all the props and we've assigned the roles, then we're going to check it. We wanna make sure that what looks good, so say this is our process here and we think, you know what, that looks really pretty. We want to make sure that it actually manages all the risks that we wrote down, that it achieves all the benefits that we wrote down and that the roles are clear. So we're going to look at our process and saying, hmm, is this likely to achieve the output that we thought? Yes, it will. That's good. And if it doesn't, we better fix it. So in when we're working on this with a client, we'll very often find out, you know what, we haven't actually captured, managed that risk there, for instance. And then we have to go straight back into the workflow and put in the step or change something to make it so that it does manage that risk. Otherwise, the risk is there, sitting there for wait, waiting for that person who hasn't got the extra bit of intelligence or understanding of it, to intelligence being knowledge, uh, to come out and say, oh, well, we haven't put this in, but I know it should be there. We're going to make sure that the roles are clear and each risk that we've listed, we're going to go through and say, we said there was a risk that um, we haven't recorded this, and where have we got that? Oh, there it is. We've captured it there. We said there was a risk that we might do the um, the uh, BAS without having checked the 804 account has been um, uh, zeroed out, reconciled, etc., and so on. Uh, oh, here's where we did it up here and so on. So everything we're doing is just to make sure that we've managed the risks, we've achieved the benefits to the extent we can. We should be able to look at that process and say, what is it there that might help somebody say, you know what, this is really good. I want to stay with these people. So we've communicated with them, we've given them in feedback and information, that could be it. So once we've done that, then we, we uh, will have our team uh, finalise that, make it look a bit smarter. We deploy that typically into a Google site, but as I said, it could be a SharePoint site, it could be Confluence, it could be your custom internet, it could just be PDFs, uh, it could be anything. And then it's up to you, of course, you, the client, to implement. So that would be first with your team, then with potentially with suppliers, so the people who refer to you, uh, and then also with your clients. And possibly something where we have to demonstrate that we do this uh, to maintain our uh, compliance, our license, our permits, and all those things there too. So that is the way that we make sure that we do everything systematically. We don't just end up with something that looks really pretty, uh, and we don't really know how, how effective it's going to be. So any thoughts on that? <clears throat> mm. 
Okay. Good. I'm going to take that as a bonus. <clears throat> Thought we might just jump through. Do you want to have a little look at some process mapping? Very basic. You can say no. And if you do, I'll just zip through it quickly. Um, no yeses, no noes. So I'm going to leave that. Anyone want to have a look? Okay, I'm going to go. You tell me. So this is our little process here, very basic little process for uh, creating a new member of our little club. So I'm not trying to make it complex or big. It's simply we have a little club and here's how we create a new member. And now we're using standard figures so that it's easy for somebody to pick it up and read it. Every one of them looks the same, as you can see from the one we looked at here. They all look pretty much exactly the same in the way they're laid out and the way they work. And that's the wonderful thing about using standard figures. So all these figures we have here, the terminal, the process step, decision, document, delay, line, connector, and so on. All of those figures are standard ISO, International Standards Organization figures. So anyone who understands them can just pick it up and read it like a story. So who reckons they could follow that and just do it from what they have right in front of them? Who could um, pretty safely say I could uh, get somebody to become a member of our little club, right down to send them a welcome letter. Just put your hand up if you think you could. Given that we've only got four of us, five of us in here, we're showing ourselves, it's a bit hard. Okay, as long as I could find the form, exactly. And that's a really clever point, a uh, really important point I wanna come back to. Okay, we'll bring that one in. <clears throat> okay, uh, everyone else, could you follow the process? And I want to point out here, it, no one would really expect you to. This is a very baby little process. Some processes we have are more complex. They don't have to be necessarily to be important, but it could be a more complex process. But even for something like this, we would never give it to somebody and say, here, follow that, do your job and shut your gob. We would be giving it to somebody. It is always three things, systems plus training plus support. It is never going to be just here it is, do it. Okay, imagine if it were something like brain surgery. Uh, a member of my family needs brain surgery. Here's the process chart. Please follow this and do the surgery successfully. It isn't going to work. Change the oil in my car. Somebody who hasn't done it before is not going to do it from a flow chart that says, you know, place a bucket under it, do the, undo the nut, let the oil out, do this, do that, do that. So it really comes down to system plus training plus support. Okay, so let's look at what we've got. We've got a terminal at the top there. So the terminal is saying what the name of the process is at the top here. So this is the process to create a new member. Thanks, uh, Tanya, thank you. <coughs> so we wanna make sure that we uh, know what it's all about. So if I said, I want you to create a new member, someone's just joined, this is the process they're going to follow. Okay, and at the end, our terminal there says new member to create, new member created or it might say uh, ready to engage in activities or something like that. But these aren't steps in the process. So it's not the same as a process step. This one is the title of the process in effect. This one is the status at the end. We aren't putting steps in there, not doing anything. Now we come to the part where we are doing that. <clears throat> and if you look at them, they're always written in the active voice. Many people write processes and have it in the form of bookkeeper to create an invoice or something like that. And so you've got to interpret it, it's sort of written in code. We're putting the role and then two, and I don't know what that means there and so on. Whereas what we would do would be to say, create an invoice for the client or for the services offered and so on. So everything we do, we're putting it in the form like this, in this form, sorry. So systems is me telling somebody what to do but I don't have to be there because this is doing it for them. So if I'm telling you what to do, I'd be saying, I'll pick that up, move it over there, put it down there, close that drawer, fix this, sign that, submit that. I would be using a verb and I'd be using it in the active voice, in the imperative. So everything in systems is always saying it in the do this form. So receive the application form, review the application form. Is it complete? No, it isn't. So identify the information not required, advise the applicant of outstanding requirements, and then we wait and so on. And likewise down here, enter this, enter that, send that. 
So let's go through and look at the decision. Decisions are fantastic. They allow us to keep all the options in the process. So we have more than one way to get through the process and here we are. So when we get down here, we receive it, review the application form, and then is it complete? So it's either no or yes. Let's look at the, if it's no, it's going to be coming back up here because we came down, we said, oh, you haven't filled in all the form. I let the uh, applicant know what information they haven't provided. So I tell them that, and then I'm waiting and hopefully they come straight back and here they are. Let's look at the next route through this process and we're coming down. Is it complete? Yep, oh good, they filled in everything so we can put it in the database, enter their payment details. Have they paid though? Nope, they haven't paid. So now we're looking at the process going like that. And of course, lastly, here we are, they've now paid, everything is in there, everything's good. So see how we've got three pathways through that process. Um, there are many processes more complex, but we're not trying to make them complex. We're simply trying to capture the real world, which is those three, three paths. Okay, so that's what a decision will let us do. The other thing then, and the next one we're looking at is the document. So a document for us could be a, a, an email template, could be a, a physical paper document. Um, we use that same thing to indicate that it's a video. We use the same thing for a PDF, a guide, a checklist, anywhere, anything pretty well that is going to be tagged onto a step. So what this one first one says is, hey, receive the application form. Here's what it is called. Down here, we've got send the welcome letter and here's what it is called. And this is a critical thing to make sure. If I call it welcome letter down here, imagine if we're in old school and everything's in a filing cabinet and Mary Ann goes away to find, search for that. She comes back an hour later and says, John, I've looked everywhere and I cannot find the welcome letter. And I say to her, oh, oh Mary Ann, I'm so sorry. It's actually called on board to you or welcome on board something like that. So what's the mistake I made? I didn't have it uh, called the right thing. So it has to be the right name. So we've got, um, we've got to have the name exactly as we show it here. So if this says welcome letter, we need to have something in that filing cabinet or in our Dropbox folder or Google Drive folder or Microsoft SharePoint folder, something that is called exactly that welcome letter, whatever the name is. Here we're looking at the application form. There better be one there called application form. So exactly the same name as we show. And then we're looking at a delay. So a delay doesn't mean you have to delay here. It simply means there's a gap in time between this step and the next step. I often talk about scones and we're gonna talk about scones again in a minute. So imagine scones, baking scones. So it is to mix all the ingredients, uh, roll them out, cut them, and then put them in the oven and then take them out of the oven and eat them. Now, if we didn't have the delay in there that says wait 18 minutes while they cook, it's going to be not a very exciting scone. So, you know, put them in the oven, wait 18, uh, wait 18 minutes should be there and then take them out. If we didn't have that, we're eating raw scones every time. So the wait simply says there's a gap in time between here and here. In this one, we don't know whether that'll be 10 seconds, 10 minutes, 10 years, Never. So we just put wait and then hopefully they come back. Other times we might know, for instance, we might have one where we say, send proposal to client, wait two days and then call client to see that they've received the proposal and see if they have an answer. So if we know we're going to wait two days in the middle, we would put 2D or two days on that wait. So it's very clear. You send this, you wait two days. And of course, if we did that, we'd say, send proposal to a prospect in this case, put a diary reminder or put a task into Asana or teamwork or something to follow up in two days. Then we wait the two days and then the task pops up and says, hey, bing, 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 call them and follow up. So we're using the tools there as well. Our lines show the direction and flow. And then the last one I'm gonna show here, which we probably wouldn't need because it's a very basic little process, is a connector. Sometimes we, uh, come out from this step and we need to get all the way back up to that step. So whereas here we just draw a line, if it's a more complex process, we don't have space to draw lines. So we'd say, come out to A and then I'm saying, oh, where's the other A? And then here it is over here. So I trace that and then follow the arrow in there. So it's just another way of getting from here to there. 
think snakes and ladders. Okay, so, and then the other thing we're doing is now we've mapped it all. What we'd be doing is to say, oh, in this example, we're using uh, Gmail here, Gmail there. We're using our CRM here, whatever that might be. Um, here we're using uh, zero for our accounting system. So we put it in there. And then once we've got it there, we'll update the CRM with that. And then we would put our roles in there so we can see exactly who does everything. So this is member support, all the red ones. And then when we come down here, the bookkeeper is putting that into the, uh, into the accounting system. So somebody looking at this knows what software we're using. They know who's supposed to do which step. They can follow this because they've been trained with it. Remember system plus training plus support. <clears throat> they know which documents to use, exactly which documents. They're not searching for anything because the name is gonna be exactly the same. And they can see all the options in there, the different paths, the three different paths through that. Any thoughts on that? Would that make it easy for you to be able to follow having all of that information there? Any feedback, any thoughts? We've come a long way since I used to do it like 20 years ago. Yep. I still have somewhere, and I know it's over there somewhere, but I'm not going to look for it. My little uh, yellow, orangey, uh, clear plastic stencil thing. And I had these rotting pens, you know, that you did these special pens, and then you drew in them, and uh, never anymore. So things have come a long way. Exactly. Um, okay. Any other thoughts, any observations on, on that? Could you see yourself doing that? If you had that in place, excellent. Because if you've got that, you can see how this is going to help the guys follow it. I can go through here and I can use it for training. I can say, this is how we do this. I can use it for providing support. Now, look, you've done that, you did this, but what you didn't do was to say what they had missed. Oh, that's right, I should have told them and so on. You can use it for performance management hey, when you're doing this, you're not actually doing this step. You are never, it seems, advising the applicant. So we've got all these people who are complaining, et cetera. So you can use this, the system, if you like, in many different ways. It isn't only to work out what the best way is. Uh, the other side of that is, of course, I can look at this and I can say, you know what, I reckon we could do this quicker if we did this. I think we could do it more effectively if we did this. I think we could uh, record what we do in this step here to make sure that it works more effectively. We've got an audit trail, all of those things. Okay, so I'm going to look very, very quickly. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. If you have more than one role in the business, and most of you would have, so even though you may have four, five, six, ten, whatever people in the business, you will have more roles than that. For instance, in my business, madly searching for pens and things, I am at least four roles. Uh, yep, got them there. So I am the tea lady, very important role. Okay, I am the senior consultant, which is pretty important too. I'm also the director of the company, which isn't an operational role, so I'll ignore that. I'm the marketing person, so there's that. And I'm whatever else I am too. At some stage, um, I might say, well, these are my roles, but now, oh, wow, fantastic. I've just employed somebody and they're going to do the marketing. So I might say, this one's the marketing and hey, that's your role. So we can hand roles over to other people in the business. So it's important to think in terms of roles rather than people. So if we look at the roles we have in a business, we've got all of these ones. This is a, a methodology that we use. Um, ignore it if it's getting too complex, but really there are only four roles in anything we do. So we have, it's called RACI, but if you look at it, it's actually RC, but no one likes saying that. So RACI stands for Responsible, Accountable, Contribute, Consult, and Informed. And it's simply a nice way of saying that you are doing it, you're responsible, you are in charge of it, you have the authority, you're accountable, you are contributing to this, you provide guidance, and this person needs to be informed once it's, once it's finished. So very simply, you can have one person who is accountable. So think of a restaurant, you go to a restaurant, this is the, the, uh, the shift manager, and these are the waiting staff here. Or it could be the manager is actually serving tables as well. If we think about it, as they're going along, if they're not sure 
uh, what's in a meal? Is this one gluten-free or is there a gluten-free option here or something, just using an example? They can refer to somebody and get some guidance on that. That person would probably be the chef. And then likewise, once they've taken an order, they have to inform the kitchen. So every role is defined there. So this takes it away from saying, oh, well, what do I do anyway? I'm not sure what I do. So in this sheet, we've sort of explained uh, who is which role. So you can see the roles racy up the top there. Responsible, I do this. Accountable, the buck stops with me. Contribute consult, I'm here to help. And then informed, I need to know. So having those roles means it's really very, very clear exactly what everybody does in the, in the process. I'm going to skip this. This is the, the form that we use to capture the responsibility, the risks and benefits and the props and everything. Uh, we use that. So again, this is what we used for every one of the processes in here, this same method that we're going through here. So when we map it, uh, we typically map it with Lucidchart, which is a beautiful piece of software. <clears throat> so you can see we've got it in there. We've got all the steps in there. This one was done um, a few years ago. And so on, here's another one which uh, has all the steps in here as well. We can see exactly what the documents are called. We can see that bit of software there. Here's another one. And look at that. It's got streamlined management all over it. So this is one we worked with Nicole and Monica on. So we've got this one. Here's how we capture an invoice in Receipt Bank. That looks jazzy. Of course it does. Of course it does. So this is showing somebody how to go through and map the process. This is the process to follow. So here am I on my app here and I've come in and I go into Receipt Bank and I have to um, come in and put everything in here. I've got to put this invoice. So I've got an invoice sitting here and I need to put it into Receipt Bank. So this is showing me how to do it. And so I could very, very clearly, very simply come in here and do it. So I won't bother showing you, but I could come in here and, you know, follow that and do it. You know how Receipt Bank works. Okay, so again, it's just giving a bit of extra information here. So open Receipt Bank. Is it multiple entries? What do you mean multiple entries? And here are the capture. Oh, multiple, single or combine. Oh, got you. And then select the capture mode. Is it single mode? Most things are going to be. So I take the photo, check the photo quality to make sure it's readable. And then is the photo okay? Yes, it is, otherwise retake it. And then uh, do I need to add any notes? I might, so I go in there and tap away or dictate into it and then do that. And then I save and then I submit for processing and that's all I had to do. So for most things, people are just going to come in, get the receipt, open receipt bank, take the photo and then submit for processing. So again, I'd be showing them that this is what you, this is all you need to do for most things. But was, would that make it easier to get the guys following exactly what they should do with Receipt Bank? Just a quick thumb up. Would it make it easier for them? Yep, there you go. So all we're doing is to try to make it easy for people to do the right thing. Most people don't come to work thinking, today I'm going to break something, today I'm going to leave out a couple of important steps in a process, uh, all of that. What people do is to want to do the right thing. And what we're trying to do all the way through is to say, hey, if you follow this, you are doing the right thing. Here are our roles. So we know that this is done by the bookkeeper. This same process could have been done by, you know, a team member in a client company as well for that matter. Uh, but then the contribute consult would be in this case, a senior bookkeeper. If you're not sure, ask the senior bookkeeper who owns the process. The process owner is the directors. So that gives you that one. And by the way, um, Nicole has been made it very, very clear. She's extremely happy to give you a copy of that, should you like one. So there you go. And you can impress people with it. Okay, so that is mapping it into Lucidchart. Uh, we love Lucidchart, very simply. Um, just to prove it, there's a picture of me uh, with a fellow called Bear, Bear Shelton. Uh, and he is uh, one of the guys at Lucidchart. He's one of the designers, software designers there. Isn't that impressive? So we publish it onto a Google site and I could show you that, but it's really just everything is in there. Everything's available. We've got all our process there. We have all our props there. So I can click in there and go straight into a document. Here's a template for doing that. Here's something for do that. And we've got all the different ones. 
uh, for different clients we've developed to a um, few hundred of them. So that brings us pretty much to the end. So Q&A, what will you do? What will you do? So this is where we all go embarrassingly quiet. I'd love it if you took your mics off and joined in because it's a good thing to do. Any thoughts? Any, anything at all? Just, this is a conversation. <clears throat> um, if you are interested in that um, receipt bank workflow, I guess we designed it for end users, so I can share that with you if you want to have a closer look and see how it works and or force it onto your clients. Indeed. Didn't like the word forced there. Gently but suggest. But it's appropriate. Yeah. No, I've got one of those, Nicole, too. I'm trying to force the My Odd Capture app on a very reluctant client. So I'm actually thinking I might do exactly what you've done and send it to her to make sure she does it. And that takes away all the things where you feel, oh, no, I've got to tell them again. Look, yeah. When you do it, don't forget. You need to, you know, you feel pointy when you're doing that. No one likes to feel like that. Mm. And so this gives them something. Let me show you how to do it using this and then move beyond that. Yeah. So it's there. Okay. Any other thoughts? Flavia? Um, yeah, no, I missed the last bit because I had a phone call, but um, no, definitely. I, def I just need something that prompts me to, okay, here is where you start this excellent I, I really need to look into those two things your brain in the box.com and and um free mind map <laughs> yeah free mind is fantastic um it's in the video where to download it uh if you were just to search for free mind download and you can just download it straight off the web uh okay. download it from the source forge site and it's right there it's i've got free. a link for it here i'll pop it in the chat Okay. Yeah, it's like I was saying, I used to do it years ago. I was a business analyst um, with banks okay. and we used to use Visio for all our yep. um, flow charting. But just those little change ups, like actually putting the software in little labels on the box. Yep. Whereas years ago, we used to go, oh, you know, you've got to go to zero and that was a box on its own sort of thing. But yep. yeah, just having those little tags is actually just, you know, it's a, those little one percenters that make a difference. Yeah. And that's, you know, this is me doing it because I, you know, worked in a, in a bank, I worked in Macquarie Bank, uh, Long Nest in other parties before that and so on. And the dry, boring way we did yeah. it, we went through and did the whole uh, mortgage management process for Aussie Home Loans, RACB Home Loans and so on. And the flow charts, and I've still got one of the books there from that, don't tell Macquarie, but um, <laughs> it was box, 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 box. And then sort of think, since then I realised, one, we've got colour, which is wonderful. Mm -hmm. Two, it's a lot easier when I put a little icon there rather than saying in zero or in receipt bank, do this and so on. It just makes it human. And that's all we're trying to do. Everything we can do to make it easier for somebody to do the right thing is better. Mm -hmm. So again, even just putting the picture of the button here, that's the camera button. So, oh, that's what I'm looking at. It must be the right one. You know, everything that we can do to make it easy is good. Yeah. John, can you go back a slide or two? The one... Uh... No. Oh, you just had one there again with the, um, oh, you had the software again and something else. But basically where the human, de yes, that one there, where the human decisions come into it, is it complete? Should that be applied against a person or a role? Yeah, so position? that would typically be the person beforehand. So they're doing it and they're asking this question. Okay, yeah. So in this review, so this is really just the traffic cop saying, well, what do you think of when you reviewed it? There are times, however, when I will put that decision on there, the, the role, the role tag, tag, so that it's really clear. But essentially here it's saying, you're reviewing it and based on your review, is it complete? No, it isn't. Is it complete? Yes, it is. Yeah. So it's just, and again, there's no, the rule is, it has to be clear. Yeah. So if it isn't clear, then apply that rule that says, well, I'll put that tag there and make it clear. Mm -hmm. And so, so for some processes we work on, there would be more uh, tagging and so on. So we've only got two roles in here. 
Uh, some processes we might have three roles involved, some maybe four. Generally speaking, we're trying not to have tons and tons of uh, swapping hands because obviously every time yeah. you're doing that, you're putting it at risk. Mm -hmm. But we do want to get that clarity in there to say, hey, here's how we do that. And then when you change apps, you've got to go and update it all. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> yes, exactly. When you start using Asana, um, we had to remap everything because our first step is always Asana tells me to do it. Mm. And then it goes on from there. Um, so we we have redone quite a lot of them. And when we started out in 2015, we were still mm. switching over to zero. So we had maps for doing things in uh, Myob and maps for doing things in zero. We've yeah. thrown out all the Myob ones now. Um, yeah. Give them to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, they were pretty, you know, life has moved on. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and I'm again, happy. we see the same things like in... And it comes to, to into play when you see the streamlined ones because um, when we've worked with Nicole, there you know we've got all of the here's our master temper for 2015, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, you know, and so on. You can tell the history there because we update the the uh, and it's not showing there, but we have a you know little copyright notice down the bottom to make sure that everyone realises you know these are our things. Mm. But um, the other thing is, yeah, we are updating software as we go along. We're updating. The way we do it, sometimes we're updating terminology, uh, the roles change, all those things change as we go along. Um, I'm going to show you, if I could, one slide that isn't in this presentation. Um, so this is me sort of jumping out. And I think it's probably worthwhile showing because it's a really good uh, little one. I wonder if I have it. No, I haven't. I've got a thank you slide down there. I forgot that one. You can look at that. There it is. Wasn't that impressive? Uh, let me just show this one slide. I won't go into a whole pile of um, boring stuff, so you're not going to be taken over. But this one is, I meant to actually put it in here. Um, the one slide is answering that question that people ask me. But John, once I've got my systems in place, how will I know that people will follow them? Are you sharing um, the group screen? I'm going to in just a moment. Um, there you go. That's me inside. Look, you can see the titles down the bottom. Oh, no. Um, I'm just bringing up one slide here. You'll see it in just a moment. I'm just getting it, getting that one slide. He said, here we are. Okay. So that's it. And slideshow from current slide. There we go. Kapow. Okay. Can you see that one slide there? Yeah. Confront every breach. So those are the three most important words in systems. Okay, so the three most important words in systems, very, very simply, confront every breach. So if you had a child and you saw the child about to put their hands on a hot plate or the hot saucepan on the stove, what would you do? No, Jimmy's got to learn. Would you apply that logic? Probably not. I'm hoping you wouldn't. So if you saw that sort of thing about to happen, you'd say, oh, Jimmy, 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 stop, 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 stop. You're about to do the wrong thing. <clears throat> it's exactly the same with everything in business. If we've said this is the one best way of doing this, then we better make sure that we actually have that covered. So we better make sure that everyone is following that process rather than any other option. So once we've said here, we've trained you. So if we think here we've got the systems, we've got the systems in place, we've provided training in using those systems, we've gone through this and walk through it and we've gone through every aspect of it so that you know what to do, then we expect you to actually, um, given that we're gonna keep on providing support, we expect you to do the work, which means in the environment using the tools we've provided, you prioritize what you're doing, you do it and you check it. And then once you now say, good, I've done that, I've done it, I've checked it, it's all correct, I believe, they hand it on to the next person who's going to do a quick check. Oh, good, you've done that. You've done that. Oh, good, that balances. And then if it's okay, that's fine. They get on with their task. If it isn't, then what they should do straight away is confront that breach. Now, confront a breach doesn't mean, hey, fool, and so on. It doesn't mean be aggressive, be assertive, be horrible. It simply means, oh, um, can I just hold you there? Oh, you haven't filled in this bottom bit down here. You just need to fill that in too. And then please do it now. So that simply goes back and that person would do it. 
and then resubmit it or give it back to you. Oh, good, that's it. Thank you so much. But what I've done is to train that person to do the right thing. And that's a crucial thing there. The other thing is if we now review what we've got, we check what we've got there, and now we're going to confront the breach and we realise oh, that we say to the person, hey, you haven't done this. And they say, oh, yeah, actually, I, I couldn't find how to do that. I went and had a look in our intranet or in the, in the folder or wherever it is, and I couldn't find anything that showed me how to. So then we realise, oh, wow, we need to update our systems. So that's when we come back here and come round the corner and update our systems and obviously then provide training and provide support. Sometimes when we say you haven't done this, they say, yeah, I know I haven't, but I wasn't sure how to do it. I haven't been trained. So that uncovers a training requirement. So confronting a breach isn't a negative thing. It must always be treated positively, but this is the system's way of work. This is how we reinforce what we're supposed to be doing. This is how we make the dog's wag a tail wag. This is how we make sure that everything happens the way it's supposed to. Okay, so then the... Uh, what was I going to say with that? Sorry, confront every breach. Crucial. Okay, that's it. There you go. So confront every breach. If you find it happening, uh, find something not working the right way, confront the breach, work out what it is. It may just be do it. It may be improve the systems, maybe provide the training, maybe just provide a bit of support. So um, an example of this in play is almost every client I work with, or not almost, and probably 30% of clients I work with will say, oh, you know what, we've got one of our biggest problems. Uh, it is we give our invoices out and people just don't pay on time. And my usual response is, yes, you've trained them well. You've trained them not to pay you on time. So we train people not to pay us on time by not following up, not confronting the breach. When they go beyond terms, we should be straight away getting there and saying, hey, I'm just following up on my invoice. Um, it's actually over terms. You should have had it paid by yesterday. Uh, are you able to pay it now, et cetera, et cetera. And what we do by doing that is to train them to follow our terms, to follow the system in effect. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. If you have any questions, I would love to uh, follow up with those and to see if anyone has any other questions that go there. So is that high 10 from Arithma? I'm just checking there. Okay. All right. Any questions anywhere? No questions? Any answers? Donations to the poor? <laughs> um, comments on my appearance? Anything at all? We'll change the shirt. Okay. If you have any questions, uh, please visit Brain in a Box and just give me, um, put in a question there in the contact us. Um, we are obviously commercially focused, but we will not treat everything commercially. So we're just going to talk. We just want to see who you're up to and what is there. I really appreciate the opportunity, Heather, to um, be able to present this. It's been wonderful. Um, I hope that we've got a bit of better understanding of what systems are and how approachable they are, how amenable they are to helping you in your business. They are something you can do. Remember what Arthur Ashe said, you know, start where you are, use what you have, do what you can and go on from there. Nicole, if I don't thank you for offering me to come, for inviting me here, I'd be very, very remiss. So lovely to see your red shirt, your red top as always. And thank you so very, very much. It's been wonderful. Um, any questions, any more questions, I'm still here. Uh, otherwise, thank you much, Lee. And... Thank you. Thank you very much, John, for joining us today. We really appreciate it. And there's people here as well as I can see people commenting on the Facebook area as well. Um, and I think as we started off, um, people, processes, technology, um, all of those are so important in terms of a professional services business, depending on where you want to take it. Um, and it is interesting. We drew out some interesting insights, both into uh, mapping the solution, but also um, um, Nicole's uh, reality of experience in terms of I have to move, I, mo I ch make a choice to move technology, which it then impacts my processes. Um, and that's interesting as well because uh, technology should be the enabler. Um, yep. But, of course, we do need to make those decisions. Is it going to impact 
um, our processes and, and, and what do we need to uh, embrace to take that on board. It does seem um, uh, that in our industry, um, hopefully um, we're all learning from one another and we can see how other people are doing it um, and streamline um, everything as, and, 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 and really embrace as much efficiency as possible. I know um, at the moment, look, <laughs> I know at the moment, look, I'm old and I've been doing this for a long time. And so there's sort of ne never, uh, never typically major gains for me to be had, but there is, I, I, I just like, okay, let's go for those micro efficiencies if I can see anything there. Um, and uh, it, it does help working with someone else because sometimes, you know, they, they see why have you done that and you thought you put it in there for a reason, but damned if you can remember that reason you put it in there for. <laughs> and, and, and it was sort of circled back to, you know, uh, 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 an older date when it did have a reason, but through, to, through uh, whatever, it, it's no longer leaded. Or you can insert a zap in place and it doesn't need to happen manually, et cetera, which is always exciting. Um, but yeah, really appreciated you coming along. Do you think there'll be a day, John, when I can um, set up the processes using a system like you said, and then put a, um, a, a, a an artificial intelligence filter across my my computer, um, and it come back and it can actually identify more efficiencies in the way I'm doing it. That sort of thing is happening right now, um, not at the level we're working because we're working directly with clients, but certainly there are approaches to working out the most efficient way of doing everything now. So some of those are supercomputer things, uh, but certainly, yes, you can go through and you can calculate the, the shortest path and all those sort of things. But I think everything comes to the human level, so I think I'd really focus on getting it there, uh, capturing what you can right now. But I'd love to see it, and I can see it getting to the uh, extent where we're using AI so much more. Yeah, absolutely, because I know that um, a, a number of us use solutions to identify how long we are in particular areas, and then we can, mm. at the end of the day, question, why yeah. were we on that solution for so long? It should should just be a moment, et cetera. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it will be interesting just, you know, because sometimes I think these um, – the technology changes where it is positioned and they're like, oh, it's an efficiency for you guys. And you're like, really, is it? Hmm. But I do think that uh, different job processes impact it differently. So I think bookkeepers yeah. will use um, software differently to perhaps the accountant will. And yeah. it's like, okay, but you just made that universal change for all of us um, and now that's giving me extra time, et cetera. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it is interesting. And, and certainly related to what you're saying there with AI and even just the difference, say, between bookkeepers and accountants. So bookkeepers are more accounting for how the money was spent, if you like. Mm. Uh, and I apologise if I'm oversimplifying that. Whereas the accountant is going to go into more the decision-making and the guidance around that. So, and then going up to a CFO who's going beyond that again, if you like. But um, each level of process is accommodated by just capturing it and mapping it that way so yeah, yeah. absolutely absolutely Good. well thank you very much and thank you nicole for um leading a wonderful session really appreciate you as always supporting the community through these challenging times um and helping us all in such a generous and sparkly red way <laughs> shucks <Thank you. laughs>